some mention of an EVM compatible hyperchain on Twitter and, and some other places. And so what exactly might that entail? Um, can you share sort of what specific use cases you would see solved by that? Um, and do you think it's something that trust machines might take on? Yeah, so it's a it's an idea at a very, very early stage. And I think one of the good things about a uh, open source community and building out in the open is that you can share ideas even when they are, are at very early stage. So uh, I, want, I want people to kind of like understand there's no EVM compatible hyperchain that is actually being developed right now, but people are kind of like discussing those ideas. And that's that's like kind of like the stage we're at. And I think where this thing is really coming from is that I'm I'm like a firm believer that clarity is by far a superior language in terms of safety, right? Like it is a much more safe language. Uh, all the developers that have, have kind of like started, you know, building in the SACS ecosystem, we have more than 4,000 smart contracts published. Uh, they kind of come back and give the same feedback that, hey, this is amazing. You know, it really optimizes for security. It really makes you think what exactly is your contract trying to do? It's very precise, right? And you and and you can have uh, you know formal proofs. Obviously, the those that tooling is not there yet fully, but you can much easily have formal proofs of execution. You can know exactly what the program is going to do even before you execute it. And there are really nice things like post conditions and whatnot. And and I'm I'm really glad the way that Clarity is designed is actually like a perfect language for for building smart contracts. With that said. I think if you kind of like look back um, on, on the history of programming languages, even on the internet, you know, a lot of really talented engineers and a lot of my colleagues, uh, they would kind of like hate JavaScript, right? Like JavaScript is, was like this language that that is uh, kind of like, you know, people would joke about it that how bad it is, how badly designed a language uh, uh, JavaScript is and so on. At the same time, it happened to be the first language uh, that was supported on Netscape, the, the one of the early browsers. And then it kind of like became a standard. And then so many new developers came in and some of the web developers, JavaScript was the first language they learned, right? And they they sometimes feel like some of the other languages are much more complicated and they, they don't want to learn it. And over time, like JavaScript basically became so dominant that at some point, like, you know, people would reluctantly <laughs> Uh, adopt it, right? And I think it's like something similar is actually happening with with the EVM here. Like I, I am absolutely in the other uh, camp. Like I'm not in the Turing complete camp. I don't like JavaScript as as a language personally as a programmer. But I do think that um, it it might be a, from a syntax perspective. Like you know, more JavaScript developers are familiar with uh, with with Solidity, and EVM being the first kind of like smart contract platform uh, that was launched like years and years ago has a level of kind of like industry uh, penetration and adoption that is hard to ignore, right? So what, what, what that results in is that if you your, your, your ecosystem has, has some sort of a EVM compatibility, then third party folks would much easily integrate it. That's, so these might be exchanges, these might be uh, custody providers, they might be uh, you know, third-party tracking websites who are gathering metrics for, for your ecosystem, or they might be bridges or any, anyone really, like anyone who wants to work in the ecosystem. If, if you have some sort of an EVM compatibility path, then it is much, much, much easier to do those integrations. And then there are a bunch of like developer tools and documentation available uh, for, for Solidity, uh, given that, you know, it is the most widely adopted smart contract language out there, right? So it, it's hard to kind of like ignore those facts. That's just the market reality. And it's and for us, that kind of like means that, hey, um, the, the idea for the even compatible hyperchain started from the fact that I don't think that I would ever not have clarity as the main language, because I think safety is by far the, the most important thing for blockchain, especially when you're dealing with money or you're dealing with Bitcoin. And, and, and I think that there's a good culture fit as well. Like people in the Bitcoin community are a lot more careful with their money. And that's why Bitcoin has a very limited type of scripting language. But if the base language, let's say on the main chain is Clarity, uh, it is possible that a hyper chain, which is a much more contained environment, uh, can use a different VM. Like it doesn't need to have the Clarity VM, VM is a virtual machine, it can have a, uh, the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine over there. So it's a different execution environment. 
You can even take that concept a little bit further. So let's say there is a clarity hyperchain where really fast clarity contracts are running. Let's say there's an EVM hyperchain where really fast EVM contracts are running, or maybe there's a Rust hyperchain down the road, right? So you can you could actually support multiple execution environments. If you think of this as like com computational layers, the, the, the main blockchain, the Stacks blockchain is providing that missing layer of smart contracts and hyperchains are kind of like the scalability layers. But the scalability layers come with a side benefit that you could actually have multiple different types of execution environments over there. And this is obviously like much more down the road. Right now we are, there's only kind of like work on a clarity hyperchain going on right now, but uh, we are, we're thinking about, hey, what would the world look like if you made things even compatible? And the first thing uh, thought that comes to my mind is that a ton of integrations would become a lot more easier, like a hundred times more easier. And similarly, I do think there are a bunch of like developer tools out there uh, that would make it make life a little bit easier for developers that they could just uh, use that that code and that documentation. And interestingly, it could become like a very, um, very important, almost like a ramp, uh, like on ramp to uh, to clarity as well. So let's say that you you take some already existing Solidity code, you just quickly run it on a EVM compatible uh, hyperchain, and then when you're transferring your assets over to the to the main SAX chain, that's where you start learning about clarity, right? So you can even have like a side by side comparison, and people can uh, can learn to like appreciate the features of clarity. That oh wow, I can see how the the clarity contract is more precise, right? Or I, I can see why the post conditions are really nice to have, right? So it could almost be a kind of like a learning on-ramp path where you get people in uh, through a channel where kind of like, you know, more or better developer documentation already exists and then then, then teach them about, about clarity when they need to interact with the, with the base chain. Great, thank you. Now you just were talking about you know, EVM compatibility and also previous to that sort of scalability efforts. And so a lot of this work has to do with the underlying sort of stacks blockchain and, and protocol. Um, and so we're in this fair market, it's a great time for building. Um, can you talk a little bit about sort of like the meaty problems that folks would be able to solve if they sort of come into the ecosystem and are interested in contributing to the stacks blockchain? Yeah, so I think first of all, uh, you know, our ecosystem uh, typically traditionally has been really focused on the long term, right? So we are running a marathon. We know that, you know, Bitcoin is not going anywhere. We know that the opportunity of like turning Bitcoin into a productive capital, building on Bitcoin, building interesting businesses and applications of Bitcoin. This is a multi-decade type of an opportunity in front of us, right? And we, are, we, we plan accordingly or at least I can speak for you know, the organizations that I'm involved with. So I am the CEO of Trust Machine. We re recently raised $150 million round of funding. And then I'm the, the chairman of the board on Hero, uh, where you know, Hero also has like a you know, ton of capital uh, on their balance sheet to be able to survive for the next you know, three, three plus years and, and, and so on, along with like growing like really, really rapidly. Like, I don't know if people have noticed, but the, the size of the hero team has actually gone up a lot recently. They've done a great job on hiring and, and so on. And there are other, other entities in the ecosystem, like the Stacks Foundation, there's Damon, and the list goes on and on. And I think most of these people are actually pretty well prepared for a bear market because they've, they've seen one before, or in my case, I've seen two, two of them before, right? And, and with that, we were actually planning that when the, whenever the bear market starts, we'll start deploying capital. We will actually start hiring uh, hiring people that might be looking for other opportunities, not just in crypto. I'm sure some projects in crypto are gonna disappear and there will be uh, really good engineers who are looking for new work. But similarly, outside, if there's a downturn uh, in the broader tech market, I think a lot of like really good engineers would be looking for new opportunities. And I think we wanna, we wanna come in and, and uh, capitalize on these opportunities and give them like really interesting, really intellectually stimulating challenges to work on as well. So I would say, first of all, like, you know, a bunch of these entities, including, you know, Trust Machine uh, and Hero, they're, they're hiring, they're actively hiring. Come talk to us if you're interested in starting a career in the crypto industry, and especially like if you, if you love Bitcoin, if you love Bitcoin as money and you want to kind of like see the economy of Bitcoin grow or the Bitcoin ecosystem grow, like this is almost like the perfect opportunity for you to come and, come and work at. In terms of the meeting problem, I do think that there is so much work required 
um, even kind of like at the at the blockchain or systems level uh, in this ecosystem, right? So the the stacks the stacks layer is actually very different from Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is not going to change that much. Still, you know, there are a group of core developers who actively work on the code base, maintain it, so on. So it's not just maintenance work that's happening on Stacks because Stacks is a smart contract platform, right? It is going to be kind of like more experimental. It's going to upgrade much more often and there is a decentralized governance mechanism through which that happens. But there are all sorts of features, for example, for the Clarity language. There are like new features that get implemented all the time. And whenever there's a network upgrade, uh, they get pushed out. And right now, I think there, there are people who contribute to the code base, but we can have like 3x or 5x more, more uh, folks contributing and still have more work to do. Right? And that's very, very intellectually interesting work because you're working at the consensus level or you're working at the, the virtual machine level or you're designing you know, some of the features of the programming language. So people who like to kind of like go deep on systems, if you have a background in distributed systems, if you're done work in embedded systems, or just like you know backend engineering in general and want to kind of like really uh, uh, dig your teeth into like meaty technical problems i think that's actually like, like a great area to come in and explore options and that's just like one part of it right like i can't even cover all the different types of people that are being hired like across the ecosystem all the way from some of these entities that you have uh, that i mentioned to applications that are being built and almost every startup every application out there is, is looking for engineers is looking for product people is looking for growth uh, uh, folks and so on well thank you so much Maneev. thanks everyone for tuning into stacker chats please make sure to like this video subscribe for more content and let us know if you have any questions in the comments below or on twitter and we'll see you next week thank you